all right. Feel free to say hi in the chat if you like, and you can also use the uh, the Q and A tool uh, if you're watching, participating live in this webinar. Hey, Anna. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, this CoSpaces EDU webinar uh, titled "Getting Started with CoBlocks." We're gonna uh, we're gonna get going here, and um, we'll spend the next hour uh, working through um, all things CoBlocks. Uh, hopefully, uh, I mean this is very much a beginner's uh, webinar. We'll do some basic uh, learning and playing with CoBlocks today. I very much want this to be hands-on. Um, I want you, uh, for those of you watching live and those of you who will watch the recording after, follow along with me. I'm going to go at that pace. So I'm going to demo things today. We'll be in CoSpaces building some simple CoBlox programs. Uh, so for those of you that are watching um, live, uh, take take a moment. Get uh, get yourself logged into your CoSpaces account. and. Um, I want you to follow along with me. So do do as I do. Let's uh, let's play around and explore with uh, Coblox together today. Just waiting on a few more coming in. Hi, Geoff. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Say hi in the chat if you like. Again, feel free to use the Q and A tool uh, in this uh, webinar space, and I'll uh, try to check into the the questions throughout this workshop, uh, this webinar, and uh, I'll take a look at them at the end as well. But uh, let's get started. Um, so welcome, everyone. My name is Michael Fracano II. I'm a uh, CoSpaces EDU guru ambassador. I've been using uh, CoSpaces EDU since before they were an EDU product, since they first came on the scene as just CoSpaces. And I've loved the tool ever since. My students love it. I've used it every year in my uh, K through six design and technology class. Um, and throughout the years, I've done things like lesson plan development. I've created some CoBlox tutorials, which I'm gonna share with you today. And we're actually gonna take some time to use them. I've also uh, developed a uh, CoSpaces uh, game development curriculum for Games for Change, which I'll share with you today as well. And um, if you're in, if you're on Facebook, uh, hopefully, you're a member of the CoSpaces EDU community. I'm a, face, I'm a group moderator there. Um, so uh, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, please do so. It's a great community, lots of amazing people. Um, today's uh, webinar, you can access the slides that I'm showing with you today, as well as a bunch of resources. You can access via this link here on my website, arvredu.hub.com slash coblocks dash webinar and i'm gonna throw it in the chat as well for all my live viewers let's get that typed in really quick there we go so it's in the chat there but again um the slides that i'm showing you are accessible on this website as well as links to a bunch of resources if you type it in correctly it should take you to this page here oops go back there um, getting started with Coblox. The slide deck is embedded right across the top, as well as links to uh, a bunch of resources that I'm going to be sharing throughout the webinar as well, and a, uh, a trial code there. So um, you can bookmark this. It'll be available after the webinar today. It's not going to go anywhere. So feel free to share it with your colleagues. Use it as a, as a, as a personal resource as you uh, continue to explore um, CoBlox with your students and in your classes this school year. Welcome, welcome. We're just getting started, everyone. I see a few more people coming in to the live webinar. So again, uh, here's the link to the webinar slides and resources. And for those of you just jumping in, again, I want this to be very much hands-on following along. So if you uh, if you care to uh, log into your CoSpaces account, Get ready to do a little Coblox programming yourself, and uh, hopefully we can have some fun today along the way. Okay, so before we get into actually creating with Coblox, I do have a few tips, and these are these are Coblox tips that I share with my students, and I constantly reiterate and remind them of these three really important tips 
as um, I help my students learn how to program with Coblox. So let's take a look at these tips and then we're gonna put them to use during our, our demo phase of today's webinar. So the first tip, probably the most important thing to remember when you're creating with Coblox in CoSpaces is to uh, make sure that you flip the switch. That's what I tell my students. So any object that you want to program in your co in your CoSpace, um, you have to make sure that you flip that use in CoBlock switch. And that's in the code option when you open up the menu for an object in CoSpaces. If that switch is not on, then you can't program that, that particular object. And this is typically when my students get further into programming in CoBlox um, and they run into an issue, uh, I would say probably th three out of four times, most of the time it's because they forgot to turn the switch on. It's really easy to forget. You know, it's it's one simple thing that needs to be done, but if you don't do it, um, you're unable to program that object. So uh, turn on the using CoBlox switch for any object that you want to program. And you wanna make sure you do that first. So I typically in, demoing and demonstrating to my students and, and walking them through the process. We always, you know, as soon as we drag in a new object into our post space, this is usually one of the first things we do is we go into the objects menu, uh, tap or click on the code op, uh, box, and then flip that switch on use in Coblox. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to always get in the, um, um, always, make sure that you rename your objects when you bring them in. Um, your objects you drag in from CoSpaces will have a pretty decent default name, but you know, if, for example, if you have multiple elephants in your scene, you'll wanna name them appropriately. Um, the better the name of your object, the easier it is to identify when you're planning to program that CoBlock I mean, program that object in Coblox. So, you know, elephant A or baby elephant or um, you know, adult elephant or elephant one, depending on what your plan is for, for those objects, uh, naming them appropriately, renaming them, giving them an easier to identify uh, name will go a long way in helping uh, to better manage your, your programming. So naming your objects is tip number two. And tip number three is um, uh, to uh, um, create Coblox workspaces, uh, separating Coblox workspaces to better organize your programs. So like with my students, when they're, maybe they want to uh, program, you know, two characters talking in this part of the code space. And so I'll uh, practice and uh, train them on creating a Coblox workspace for just that interaction. And then if they want, you know, this car over here to drive on that road in the same co-space, uh, I'll instruct them to create a separate Coblox workspace to program that car. So rather than uh, combining all these Coblox into one workspace, if you do that, your programs get to be, they end up becoming very long with lots of blocks and it makes it really hard uh, to debug if issues um, arise in, in your co-space. Um, but, you know, if you have that car driving on the road program in a separate workspace and you see that that car is not doing what you're, what it's supposed to, what you want it to, um, it's a lot easier to go to that specific workspace and then debug that specific program as opposed to um, scrolling through one long workspace full of all these blocks. So creating separate Coblox workspaces is a great way to keep things organized. It's, it's what good programmers do. Um, and it's a great way to, um, to to stay on track and to help help debug in the future. So you see a little screenshot there of, of creating a new workspace, and we'll we'll practice that again as we uh, go through some some demos today in our our webinar. So tip number three is all about creating and staying organized with Coblox workspaces. So just to recap here, tip one is flip the switch. So always remember to turn on the using Coblox switch when you're when you want to program an object name your objects appropriately uh, either based on their purpose or giving them numbers or letters just make it easier to identify objects when you're ready to program with them and oops, and uh, separate your programs into coblox 
into separate Coblox workspaces to uh, to keep um, to stay organized when programming. So yeah, we'll practice these as we do some demos today. And then these are tips that I uh, share with my students up front when we begin learning how to program in CoSpaces. And these are things that I constantly reiterate and remind my students about as they continue to work in their CoSpace with, with CoBlox. All right, so let's get into some live uh, demonstrations. I wanna, um, I'm gonna actually jump into CoSpaces I'm going to show you some resources and then we'll refer to those resources as we learn some of the basics of Coblox and how it works and how we can do some pretty amazing things. Um, so if you're following along, I definitely want you to jump into your own CoSpaces account, um, create a brand new CoSpace and follow along and do as I do. I'm going to go at a fairly slow pace, kind of talk through the process of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, and uh, again, I want you to follow along with me if you can um, to uh, to learn some of the basics of Coblox. So to get us started, um, what I want to refer to are two uh, Coblox tutorials that I created in the past. And these two uh, tutorials that I have are uh, they, they teach you how to do two um, very basic things, but they they are things that my students um, are really interested in doing the most when we get into CoSpaces. Um, so our first demonstration here is all about creating objects that interact with each other, right? So in CoSpaces, without Coblox, you, you can drag in three-dimensional objects, and they're all pretty static. You can give them animations. You can make them move around in different ways. But for the most part, the scene is pretty static. Things just kind of stay put. And um, to make it more engaging and fun and interesting, uh, programming uh, using code blocks is how we get objects to interact with each other, to move around, to talk with each other, um, and to make for a more um, immersive experience in code spaces. And so in this uh, tutorial here, code objects to interact, we're going to uh, uh, learn how to program um, a character, a person, and an animal to interact with each other. In the scene, and there's a bunch of different uh, things we can, um, a bunch of different ways we can make them interact with each other. So, if you're following along with me in um, the slide deck here, I just want to point out this is slide number nine. And if you uh, you can click on the tutorial, it'll take you to the actual uh, the page that I have these resources, and you can download this as a PDF. So here is uh, the tutorial. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We can see it together. And it breaks down the process step by step. So adding objects to your scene. Uh, tip number one, right, was uh, flipping the switch. If you want to figure out program these objects, you'll want to turn them on to use in Coblox. Um, and then get into actually uh, programming uh, an interactive scene with the objects. And here's an example here of uh, making the characters uh, uh, animate and move uh, with each other and then testing it out and then, and then um, i like to add in like a bit of a challenge like what can we do beyond the basics here and also provide a, a sample so feel free to you're welcome to like download this print it out you can use it with your students it, it's a great i try to make it a self-paced tutorial so students could definitely i think follow along on their own but let's do this together so i'm going to jump into co-spaces i have a a co-space set up already it's just a blank um co-space Go and if you're following along with me, create a new co space yourself. Uh, just set it up as a blank co space here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my camera. There we go. And I'm going to pick an environment first just to give our, our scene a little color. What I'll do is give us a grassy field. There we go. Okay, so um, we're going to, we're going to create two objects we're going to follow those tips that i shared earlier and then we're going to create a simple program to make them interact uh, with each other okay so uh, to begin we want to decide what our objects are going to be for this particular demonstration so i'm going to choose um, a human character here let's go with the guy with the glasses since i have glasses here and i'm going to uh, drag that in 
uh, right in front of my camera. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with CoSpaces, right, everything, the camera, every scene you create starts with a camera. And the camera, uh, you become the camera when you play this CoSpace. It's a little bigger here, right? So um, just to make it easier when I play, when I test play this a little later, I'm going to position everything right in front of that camera so that I can see those objects as soon as I uh, play my scene. If I play it really quick just to see, yeah, I can see that character standing right in front of my my camera. It's, he's, he's in a good position there. Okay, so I got him in there. I'm going to rotate him a little bit so that he faces to the right. So I'm going to make him uh, animate and move a little bit across my uh, my in front of my camera here. Now, um, let's follow those tips I shared. So number one, we want, we're want we going to program this character. I'm thinking ahead a little bit in my mind of what I want to do. So I know that tip number one was flip the switch. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the object here. I'm going to go into the code button that's inside of the objects menu. And I want to flip that use in code block switch. And it's a simple, you just tap it or click it. You don't drag it or anything. Just uh, tap. Or click make that switch blue and now that object is ready to be used in the code tool a little later now tip number two name your object appropriately and this guy's called fancy boy i'm gonna make it a little bit simpler i'm gonna just call it boy okay but giving it an appropriate name so that i can easily identify that object in my code blocks uh, a little later okay and then um Tip number three will come a little later when I uh, set up my, my code blocks. But at least for the object, I want to make sure I'm following tip number one and tip number two. Okay, so do that on your end. Make sure you turn on the using code blocks and give it an appropriate name. And then I'm going to drag in another object. This time I'm going to choose an animal. Box out of the way. Let's go with a... How about... Uh, Rooster. <laughs> I'm going to put that on the other side here. Kind of space those out a little bit. Turn and face the, the boy. And then again, I'm going to repeat those, uh, those tips. So I'm going to turn on the rooster for using code blocks. And I'm going to make sure it has an appropriate name. I'm going to stick with rooster. That's a good name for it. Can't get any easier than that. Okay, so tip number one, turn on the, flip the switch. Tip number two, give it a good name. And now uh, we're ready to do some basic programming. So we've got our scene set up um, with a, a boy character and a rooster. And now we can do some basic programming. So if I go back to my tutorial, I've completed step one. I've completed step two. And now I'm going to move on to step three, which is um, opening up the, uh, the coding tool and setting up my program. So let's do that next. So in CoSpaces, I'm going to open up the code tool. Now, if you're on a computer like I am, you have a couple of options, CoBlox, TypeScript, and Python. Today's webinar is all about CoBlox. So I'm going to, I'm going to start by creating a CoBlox tool. If you're in, if you're on like a tablet, like an iPad, I, I teach at a one-to-one -one iPad school and on iPads, we only have access to code blocks and not uh, these other options. But uh, if you're a computer science teacher and you work with more advanced um, programming languages, TypeScript and Python is also uh, are also two other languages that you can program with. But we're sticking with code blocks today. So I'm going to create a code blocks workspace. Now, when you do this, when you create a new code blocks workspace, it's given the default name code blocks, which is that blue box up in the top here. This this blue box represents the workspace that you're currently in. And it has a name that you can change, right? So um, another, this probably should be tip number four, is renaming the workspaces that you create. You don't want to stick with the default because if you if you create other workspaces, the next one becomes code blocks one, the next one becomes code blocks two. And um, without proper names, it can, as you create more and more, it can get very confusing for students. And I've run into this. Students, uh, they found, they, they come across a bug 
and they've done step number three, I mean, tip number three that I mentioned earlier, where they've broken up their programs into separate workspaces, but because they didn't rename their workspaces, they're, they're clicking through all of these, trying to figure out which one has the program that they need to debug. And it, it just takes longer to figure out, right? So naming um, these workspaces uh, also goes a long way. It's what good programmers do, right? They give things appropriate names that make keep things organized, make things easier to find. So this uh, workspace that I just created, I'm gonna rename it um, boy and rooster. And now it'll look like this. So I know that this workspace that I'm currently in will have a program dedicated to the boy and the rooster interacting with each other, okay? So um, if you're following along with me, practice renaming your workspace give it a, um, a more appropriate name. So we've set up a workspace, we've given it, we've renamed it, let's see what's next. So step three, open the code box tool, check. Step four, name your script or your workspace, check. Now we're ready to program. There's a bunch of things you can do uh, in terms of making your objects interact with each other. In the tutorial here, you see uh, there's quite a few different kinds of blocks there. There's um, set animation blocks, which um, allow you to uh, initiate or start an animation for an object like a, a kid, like a person or an animal. Those are the purple blocks here in the example. Um, there are move blocks. So you can program objects to move in different directions, different distances, and you can also adjust how long it takes them to move. Um, there are weight blocks. So uh, typically, you know, weights are good if you want a little bit of, of a pause. Because if you don't have a pause, so the way the way Coblox works is it'll start from the top of the program. It'll do that first block, and then once it initiates that block, it'll move to the next one and the next one. It'll complete the move block before it moves to the next one. So if you want a little bit of a pause, like a natural, um, you know, a more natural. Uh, pause in the in interaction of two objects, a weight is really good for that. And you can give a weight a certain amount of time. You can even use decimals, okay? There's also a turn block, so you can make an object turn in, in a specific direction. Um, so we can use a combination of these. There's other things you can do to make objects interact with each other, but these are some of the basic um, code blocks. These are probably, um, I would say, the most uh, used blocks, at least with my students, in uh, when they're creating interactive experiences with their objects. So let's uh, we'll try a couple of these. We don't have to make uh, as long of a program here as we see in the tutorial. Let's give this a try. So um, I'm going to start with an animation. Now there's a couple things we can do here. Now you notice here I just stretched out my co block scene like my Coblox workspace by using this little square up in the right corner here. So I'm gonna stretch that out because when I do that and I do a search, I can see more of the Coblox here, okay? So um, an animation block is a purple block. It's an action block. And I can go into the actions and, and scroll through and look for that block that I'm trying to find, which is an animation block. I can also search for it as well, so I do train my students on use the search tools a lot faster if you know what kind of block you're looking for so it searches as soon as you start typing right i don't even have to finish the word that i'm searching for it uh, it automatically just you uh start start searching the letters that i'm typing in so i'm looking for this set animation and um i'm going to drag that in so let's use that set animation block and I'm going to drag in uh, two of them, one for the boy and one for the rooster. Okay. And I'm going to want to set the animation of the boy first. So set animation of boy. Now, this is where appropriate names, right? Good naming conventions come in handy here, right? Because this is where your this drop down is where all of the objects will be listed that you've turned on that you flip the switch for. And so being able to easily identify the object you're trying to code is important here. So I'm going to set the animation of the boy, and then I can choose the animation that I want uh, the boy to do. Okay, so 
These are all the anim animations that that particular object has available to them. And they're all listed here in alphabetical order. Um, so I'm going to look for here. I'm going to look for clap. I want the boy to clap at the beginning of the scene. And I want the rooster to crow at the beginning of the scene. Okay. So we're going to, you don't have to pick the same ones as me. Depending on whatever objects you chose, your animations might be different. Like if you chose a dinosaur, you're not going to get the crow animation. Okay. If you chose a dog, you'll probably get like a bark. You can probably have a bark animation instead, along with a bunch of other ones. But every object has its own set of, well, not every, but most objects that could, can move in some way, have a set amount of animations. So we're going to do two animations there. And now we're going to do a little bit of movement. We're going to make some of these objects move. So I'm going to clear my search bar. Now a move block is a tr it's a blue transform block and you see it's the first set of code blocks in the menu here it's right across the top but if i also search for move there are different kinds of move code blocks uh this one's the uh, the one we use the most this first one but there are like you can move objects to a specific set of coordinates you can move objects on a path um uh, so there are different, there, again, there are different kind of move blocks. And then you get like other blocks that have the word move in it, like the remove object or remove physics. But we're looking for a transform block. So we're going to use this move object meters direction seconds block, this one here. And let's place it next in our co blocks here. So move object meters. Okay. Now, Let's talk through this move block a little bit. So there's a bunch of different, there's one, two, three, four settings within the move block that um, allow us to set up an object to move. And it's important to really understand what all these settings mean. So we're telling an object to move. So we want to choose that object. That's pretty easy. So I'm going to move the boy. And then meters. So meters determines distance. Like how far do we want the object to go? Okay. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit and now meters so a meter one meter if i have my snapping grid turned on my snap to grid here and it should be on by default i think when you create a co-space that's the squares you see on the floor here Let's zoom in a little bit on the ground that's your grid now in a grid there are small squares and there are large squares okay a large square is a meter and then a small square is like a quarter okay so when we talk about moving how many meters i want the boy to get to the rooster so how many meters do i want the boy to move in order to get to the rooster i don't want him to be on the rooster kind of want him to be stopping maybe just in front of the rooster now, those of you watching live if you have access to the chat um, how many meters do I need to program the boy to get to just before the rooster? Anybody chime in in the chat? Do you guys, I don't know, do you guys have access to the chat? Not. I don't know, I don't know if you guys have access to the chat. You have access to the Q&A. <laughs> Maybe I should have done a poll. Okay, well, anyway, just to move things along here, if I count the large squares, so one, two, three, four, I want them to move four meters. I want them to be move four meters, and we'll test it out in a moment. And then uh, the next option is a set as a dis is a sorry a direction. You have a handful of directions: forward, backward, left, right, up, and down. So I can choose which direction now i've got the character facing in the direction i want him to go so that's uh so that makes it pretty easy for me uh in terms of what direction i want to choose from the move block because i want him to go forward so he's facing the, the rooster already so i want him to go in that direction that is forward for the character and then the last setting is seconds where it references time and basically the seconds tells the 
object how quickly to get four meters forward. So the smaller the number, the faster the character goes. Um, the larger the number, the slower he moves, right? So right now I'm telling him to travel four meters in one second, okay? Now, when we do things like programming objects to move, uh, it's also important to test it along the way. Don't, you know, I, I practice this with my students. Don't create these long, uh, elaborate, interactive programs and then go and test it because then it's a lot more difficult to figure out where the bugs might be. So if I'm going to tell the character to move, I should test that right away. So I'm going to press play. And let's see if the boy gets to the rooster uh, where I expect it to go. Now, when I do press play, I'm not going to see the grid, but I want the boy to stop right in front of the rooster. Let's see. Yeah, there he goes. And he's um, he's clapping because I set the animation. Now, if I refresh this, he's just sliding forward, right? So um, that doesn't look very natural. Looks like uh, I don't know what's happening there. Right? If you want it to be a more natural um, experience, then while well, we can add in another animation here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to animation and drop it in here. And I'm going to change. So right before we tell him to move, I'm going to change it to a, a walk. So he's going to start by clapping. Bruce is going to crow. Boy should start the walk animation. So his feet should start looking like he's walking. And then he'll move forward. I'm going to press play. Okay, looks so it's getting there. Looks a little bit more natural. He's moving a little too fast. So the trick here now is to uh, figure out the timing of this move block so that the walking does look more natural. So I got to figure out these, the amount of seconds the boy needs to walk uh, to make that animation look more natural. There we go. Look at that. That's getting there. Now you'll notice when he gets to the end, the animation's still going. Right, because we never told that animation to stop. When that animation is activated, it continues until another animation is chosen or we tell the animation to stop. So we don't want him to continue looking like he's walking there. So what I'll have to do oops, is get another animation after the move block. And I'm going to set that animation of the boy to don't animate. That's what tells the animations to stop. So as soon as the move block is done, the boy should stop with his animation. So if we test it again, walk, 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 and stop. There we go. So that's looking way better. Okay. So now you starting to hopefully are starting to understand the progression of the blocks and how, um, you know, what order things need to be in to make the scene become look more realistic, look more natural. Um, and make it more interactive between uh, between objects. Okay, so set animation. Now, if we go back to the tutorial, let's see. Yeah, so we pretty much um, have completed this, right? Getting now we've made one object interact with another object. We could continue building upon this program to make maybe the rooster do something like you know jump or fly in the air once the boy gets to him. Um, because chickens are very animated, roosters are very animated as well, or they maybe make we make the rooster run away. Right? So we could do lots of different things. Uh, we could continue this in lots of different ways. But I'm going to pause there with this particular tutorial so we can move on to the next one. Um, but that's uh, that kind of wraps up our first demonstration here. Right? How can we code objects to interact with each other? So just creating interactions within the code space that the viewer can watch as they uh, experience the co-space, okay? So let's move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. um, the next one here is demo number two. And here, this one's really popular with my students. Um, and this is a different kind of interaction, right? Whereas the first one was an interaction between objects in, this, in the co-space where the viewer is just watching things happen. This next uh, tutorial shows you how to get the, the viewer involved in the interaction, which is to create buttons within the co-space that can 
cause other things to happen. And in this particular uh, tutorial here, this is showing showcasing the merge cube um, within CoSpaces. Um, so if you're not familiar with the merge cube, the merge cube is like a, it's a physical, uh, it's a foam cube. You can purchase them online and you can design a three-dimensional scene on, around, or inside of this, this uh, cube. And then you can use augmented reality to project your CoSpace onto the physical thing that you hold in your hand using the CoSpaces app. It's a lot of fun. Kids really enjoy it. It's really, it's highly engaging, really interesting. And the fact that you can get kids to create their own augmented reality experiences with this in CoSpaces is really some really cool stuff. But um, the concept here, creating an interactive button, isn't specific to, to the merge. You could create interactive buttons in your regular CoSpaces. It's just that this tutorial that I made uh, kind of demonstrates the idea along with the merge cube. So I'm going to demonstrate that uh, with a merge cube space. If you don't have the merge cube add-on, um, you could just do this in a regular co-space as well if you want to follow along with me. So I'm going to go home. And um, what I've done here in my second demonstration here is I've uh, created a merge cube co-space using the All About Me merge cube. This is a project I've done many times in the past. Kids really enjoy it. It's a great uh, beginning of the school year um, project. It's a great way to uh, get kids creating in CoSpaces. It's also a great way to get students uh, starting to dabble a little bit in CoBlox because you can program some fun interactive, uh, uh, some interactive buttons in the All About Me. But I've set one up already. So I'm going to jump into it. So here's my all about me template Excuse me. so the idea in this particular project is kids will decorate you know redecorate edit and change the sides of the cube and um i'm on a computer so i can't you know fully experience the augmented reality aspect of this but uh when i'm building it and testing it and i press play i have this three-dimensional cube that i can uh, interact with and move around and explore to learn about my peers in my class once I'm done creating it. But uh, on one, on the back side here is this uh, my favorites side where uh, you share a little bit about you know, what's your favorite animal, favorite color, favorite food. These categories could, could, could be changed by the student. You could have them pick their own three categories. Now, in the default template, there are some text boxes next to these, but I deleted them. And I'm going to create a button that, when pressed, will uh, change the text here to the answer. Okay. So let's get into the tutorial here. I'll zoom in. Again, if you get those of you watching live, if you have any questions or any comments, Maybe you can't use the chat feature, but the Q&A is available, and you can definitely I see Jeff in there uh, said hi, um, hi in the Q&A there. But feel free to chime in there if you uh, have anything to say. But let's create an interactive button. So um, a button, you, know, you, you could turn any object in CoSpaces into a tappable or interactive button. Uh, in the tutorial here, I'm just using a basic cylinder, and then we're flattening it a bit to look like a circular button, okay? So I'm gonna insert a cylinder. I'm gonna flatten, uh, resize, and position it uh, to my specifications on the cube here. So what this looks like is a library, building, and I'm gonna find the cylinder. Oops, it's right there. I'm going to drag in a cylinder. I'm going to drag it in right in front of my cube. Let's... Okay. So there's my cylinder. Now, um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to resize it first. I'm going to make it a little bigger. And then... Um, there we go. And then I'm going to flatten a little bit. So it's a tall cylinder right now, but if I drag the blue arrow here, 
stands for height. If I drag it down, I can flatten this cylinder out. Now it's a little disc. It's like a white disc. Okay, now it's starting to look more like a button. I'm going to change its material also and give it a different color so it stands out a little more. There we go. So now I have a red disc from that cylinder. Okay. So again, I, I used the resize tool, drag to scale. I used the um, the blue arrow on the top of the cylinder to to flatten it out. Now, if you don't see these arrows, it might be because one of your um, manipulation tools here was turned on. So if you turn something on like the rotation mode or the translation mode, you lose those those reshaping arrows. So if I click on this translation mode and turn that off, then I get those arrows back. And I'm using the blue height arrow to resize. Okay. Now, once I have that, I need to get it on the uh, the, the wall here. Okay. Now, the, the easiest way to do this is to start by attaching it to the wall. So I'm going to double click and use the attach tool. And I'm going to attach it right to the center here of this blue, um, this blue wall here. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it should turn it uh, in the direction I want it to, to be like this. Now it's putting it right in the middle. I don't want it quite there, but I can use the translation mode now to move it uh, from its original attached position. So I'm going to use the red arrow here to slide it over a little bit. I'm not going to move it in any other direction. It's pretty, it's lined up pretty nicely with the animal category there. Okay, so now there we go. I have a button in place attached to my favorites wall there, lined up with the animal category. Now in the tutorial, it does, um, you know, you can, but you can also do is like use the the upload image and you can search for like, a play button or a, like a question mark. You, know, you could like attach an image to the the cylinder to make it, you know, look more like something that needs to be pressed, right? So like in the example here, I, I searched for a play button in the web search tool and then uploaded it and then I attached it to the cylinder. We're not going to do that now, but, you know, that's an extra thing you might want to consider. Uh, doing. I'm just going to leave mine as a red button. But the next thing is to get it ready for coding. So I'm going to name the image. I'm going I'm to name the button, actually. I'm going to flip the switch. And then um, I need to figure out what it's going to do. So let's let's get back to ghost pieces. Okay, so number one, I'm going to flip the switch. Then I don't want it to be called cylinder. I want it to be called animal button right a good appropriate name what does what is the purpose of this object it this is my animal button okay there we go now in this example i'm going when i what, what i want to have happen is when i press this button i want this text box to change and reveal the answer now right now i'm going to leave it alone and let it say animal but there's a code block that allow us to do this. I'll show that in a moment. But I want to make sure this is on because I'm going to program this text box. So using code blocks, I'm going to leave the title alone. That, that's a good title. Well, I'm going to call this animal text, actually. Animal text. Okay. Uh, so text box is ready for coding. Button is ready for coding. Let's go do some programming. So I'm going to open up my code tool. Now, there's already some code built in to this um, particular template. Um, uh, it's It's got some blocks that when you actually feel like rotate the cube, um, it'll have certain things happen. So I'm going to leave that code alone. I'm not going to program in this workspace. I'm going to create a new workspace, code blocks. And as I mentioned, you know, tip three is to is to set up your workspace. And we should rename it. So I'm going to call this favorites buttons. I can program all of my, you know, I'm not going to do all three, but 
I could create the programs for all three of those buttons for this particular side. Now, to get us started, the way this works is when somebody presses the button, then you want something to happen. So this is an events block. Let's stretch this out. So in the events, we have a button called when object is clicked. And that's what we want to start with. So when that animal button is clicked, whatever we put inside of this event block is what will happen. Okay. So when animal is when animal button is clicked. Now we want, in this case, I want to change the animal text box to the answer. I want it to reveal the answer. And there is a block that does that. It's this one here. So I'm looking for this action block called set text of. And what that does is it allows you to change uh, whatever the displayed text is for a selected text box. So I'm going to add that into the event block here. Now you see it goes inside, so not at the bottom, not like this. It, we want it inside the when clicked event. So when animal button is clicked, we're going to set the text of the animal text. And then in this last box here, we can type we want it to say. So my favorite animal is a, let's see, squirrel. So if I type it into that box there, um, when the button is clicked, then that text box will change. So let's test this out and see if it works. So I'm going to press play. Okay, here's my merge queue. Now, if something has a when clicked block assigned to it, when I hover over that button, you see it kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see on your end, but it kind of lights up a little bit and my mouse turns into a hand. That's how we know that, that we can interact with that object, we can do something there. Now, right now my animal text box shows the word animal because that, that's what I had typed in there in the beginning. But when I tap on the button, it should change the word animal to the word squirrel. And there we go. So that's an example of creating an interactive button that the viewer can interact with, can, can use within the experience. And this is just one example of what we can make an interactive button do. Uh, for example, making a, a text box change. Yeah. So again, whatever's inside of the event block is what will happen. You know, so maybe um, instead of the text, maybe along with the text changing, I could have a squirrel up here and run around the, the cube or jump up in the air. Right. So um, I could, you know, any blocks that I put in here is what will occur when the user taps on that button. And then from there, we could do something easy, like I could duplicate this and then move it down and then rename it to color button. Make sure, oops, make sure it's turned on, yep. And then I could do the same for color. So I could say um, when, oops, don't do that. Goes on the bottom outside of the event. So when color button is clicked, I can, there we go, set the text of, oh, I don't have my color text. That's because I skipped step number two here. I'm step number one, turn on, and tip number two, rename. There we go. Color text to blue. Now I have two buttons. So animal, color. It doesn't matter which one I do first. Refresh and do squirrel first and color second. And then I can duplicate again. So I duplicate, I'm just recreating the same set of blocks, stacking them underneath and changing the objects that are being used as well as the, the text that I'm setting it to. Pretty cool. So that's um, creating an interactive button. My students love doing this. And it's a great way to, uh, it's a great introduction to creating 
uh, a more interactive experience for the user themselves? Like, how do we get the user to participate in the experience that we're creating in CoSpaces? And interactive buttons are a great way to do that. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's demo number two there, interactive buttons. Okay, let me know if you guys have any questions. You can ask, you can use the Q&A tool in the live webinar here. Okay, so that's demo number two. Let me organize my screens here. Okay, so that's creating an interactive button. Uh, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, I'm using a Merge Cube space. If you don't have the Merge Cube add-on, which is an, an extra cost to the to CoSpace's licenses, it, you can create interactive buttons in any CoSpace. I'm just using the Merge Cube as a, as a great example because it's a great way to create a physical, tangible, yet augmented reality experience that is interactive for the user that's holding that 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 Merge Cube in their hand and makes for a much more engaging uh, experience. Um, so like, I'll show you really quick. So one example, this is one of the lessons in the CoSpaces lesson library uh, that I've done in the past with my students is I create, here we go. I created a merge cube experience for the beginning of the year where the students use the merge cube to learn what the class is gonna be like for them in my design and technology class. This is my intro to the tech lab experience. And so I have um, buttons or things that can be tapped and then they uh, uh, um, activate, um, you know, moving objects and in interactive scenes. So I saw, so this is, here we go. So I'm gonna zoom in here. So on this first side, it's a welcome to the tech lab. And if I go to this side and I tap on the laptop, it reveals um, a little text panel and the hands move there. And I can move it again. So, so just some bare, some basic movements here. If I tap on the light, it reveals the text. If I tap on the key, I'm, I program the key to move and, and lock the privacy. And then over here, tapping on the car reveals an example of Coblox there, because my students use Coblox. And then I've got a button here that uh, takes the changes, the merge cube to a rules cube. And I've got some play buttons that de uh, demonstrate a scene of that rule being followed. You got two characters talking to each other here back and forth. So you know, again, buttons are a really great way to pull the user in and make the experience more engaging. Um, and this is one way that as a teacher, teacher created a co-space, I uh, introduced my students to what is possible with co-spaces that we use in my class and what they're gonna learn and do in my class during uh, the school year, okay? All right, let's move on. Okay, so demo three, um, starting to code. So this is um, another great way. This is a great way to introduce um, some coding concepts to students to get them started with using CoBlox. And it's a it's a co space that you can access. This is slide number eleven, and clicking on um, the the picture here will take you to that co space template in the gallery. It's a publicly ac accessible co space called starting to code template and you can remix it if you have um if you have a CoSpaces pro account you can remix it there um and so i want to do one more demonstration but i'm gonna i'm gonna ask my audience if they can help me decide so in this particular let me get to the top here let me get back to my go so i'm gonna jump into my starting to code CoSpace here now, in this particular code space, there are three scenes that challenge the uh, student to use code blocks in three different ways. So one, the first scene is learning how to make things disappear. And the challenge is to get the lion, the elephant, and the tiger to disappear using code blocks in three different ways. Because in code blocks, you can do the same, kind of do this accomplish the same concept 
in using different kinds of co-blocks. So there is more than one way to make an object disappear in a co-space using co-blocks. So that's scene one. Scene two is the snake escape. So how do you code the snake to follow the camera? Remember, you become the camera. And if I, uh, I can make this, I can program the snake to follow me if I move away from it. Now, it's not programmed yet. That'd be a, that's a really cool way of making a game where like a, a character or a villain or a bad guy, bad character follows you around the scene. Um, so that's scene two. And then scene three is the space dinosaur. So how can we code an object to follow a path around a scene? And I've got a, I've got a dinosaur. I've got a, a path object created here. How do I program that dinosaur to follow a path? Which is like making a car drive on a road, making a uh, character or an animal move around in a scene, creating a roller coaster experience. These are all great great examples of how we, why we would want an object to follow a path in CoSpaces. So I've got three different challenges here. I'm going to let my viewers here decide. I'm going to start a poll. If you're watching me live, which one should I uh, quickly demo today in the webinar? Is it Disappearing Animals, Snake Escape, or Space Dinosaur? So for those of you watching live, if you don't mind voting in my poll, Oops, there we go. I got some boats coming in. Mm -hmm. Disappearing animals, snake escape, or space dinosaur. I got four out of my four votes so far. It looks like snake escape is the winner here. How do we get an object to follow the camera? Okay, so we're going to go with that. Show the results there to my attendees. So we're going to go with the snake escape. Now, I do want to let you know that uh, on the resource page, you scroll down a little bit. Wait, do I have it here? Wait, is this my, wait, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Okay, so on the uh, resource, the webinar resource page here, um, I do have access to the template. And then right next to it is a slide deck that actually gives you the solutions. So uh, if you're not sure how to do this yourself, I've provided each of the challenges with um, the act with the possible solution, some ideas for how we can solve this this particular challenge. So for snake escape here, um, we're gonna move, we're gonna make the snake move. Um, but we're gonna use a different kind of event block called the collide block. So let me do this really quick. We have a couple of minutes. Okay, so a couple of things. I want to make sure the snake is ready to code. So switch is on. Snake is named. I'm also going to use the camera. So I do need to make sure that the camera is ready to be used in CoBlox and it's got an appropriate name, okay? And now I'm ready to code here. So let me... Okay, so what I wanna do, i look at my solution again, is I'm gonna move the snake forward. And um, when, uh, oh, and this, well, this one here, what's happening is uh, with the snake catches the camera, um, then uh, we can cause them to go to another scene here. So let's see. Um, so I'm going to move the snake forward, right? Okay, 20, I got 25 there in the solution. 25 meters forward. Um, how fast? In three seconds, okay, three seconds. And then I'm going to use a different kind of events block called a collide block. So I'll search for that. So collide means when one object touches another object. So when they touch each other, when they collide, we can cause something to happen. So uh, now the tricky thing here is when you use a collide block, you always want the camera to go second. So when the snake collides with the camera, whatever is in the enter space is what we want to have happen when they touch, okay? So uh, maybe in my example, I will end the co-space, meaning game over. I'll do something simple like that. So when the snake collides with the camera, end the co-space. Move snake forward, when snake collides, end co-space. So let's play this and see what happens. Oh, boy. 
is catching up to me. I'm trying to walk back. Oh, no, it didn't go far enough. But when they touch, uh, there it goes. It kicked me out of my code space. So code the snake to follow the camera. Now, uh, beyond this, you could, like, the other option is to make a new scene um, and then program um, the, the scene to change when the snake collides with the camera. So I could say, like, go to scene and choose another scene that I've made. Um, so that's another option, too. So basically, like, what do you want to have happen when two objects collide with each other? Okay. So that's that's the second challenge in this um, starting to code template. Um, but again, as I mentioned, if this is something you're interested in trying with your students, the uh, the solutions I've got the solutions in this slide deck that is uh, included on this webinar resource page. So solutions for disappearing animals, solution for the space dinosaur, and a solution for the snake escape. Uh, if you want um, help with that, okay. So that was our third demo, starting to code. And we're out of time here. Oh, I got a Q&A. Do I have a Q&A? A yes, I do have a discount code, Peter. Um, I believe it still works. I'll, uh, I'll show that to you in just a moment. Great question. Let's wrap things up here for today. So a few teacher tips, a few things that I wanted to share with you. These are things that I, I do as a teacher in my class when I'm uh, teaching students how to use code spaces and uh, introducing the code blocks. So... Number one, I always begin when when uh, we start using CoSpaces in fourth grade. So when we begin using learning how to use CoSpaces, how to create in CoSpaces, I always start with the welcome to CoSpaces um, CoSpace. And uh, when students set up their CoSpaces, when they get their CoSpace account, every new account is given by default a welcome to CoSpace um, template. And it's a great way to... Uh, uh, help students learn the basics, even before code blocks. They need to understand how to uh, create three-dimensional scenes, how to manipulate the 3D objects in order to build those scenes. And so, um, again, every account gets a default one. But I do um, have, um, I, I created two different versions myself. So I've got a, a welcome to CoSpace for PCs, for computers, because how you use CoSpaces on a computer is very different from how you build in CoSpaces on an iPad. So I've got two different versions here, sorry. One for PC and one for iPad. Um, and they're linked up in um, the, uh, the slide deck here. So tapping on either one of these will take you to their versions and then you, you can remix it. But always begin with a welcome. Yeah, get, give students an opportunity to learn, play, explore, experiment, and they can do all those things in the Welcome to CoSpace. Uh, another great tool um, as a teacher that you should use, especially when you get into working with code blocks with your students, is the comment code block. So when you're when your students are doing a project that requires them to program in code blocks, you as the teacher can go into their their CoSpace and uh, you know examine their work in code blocks, and you can give them comments um, asynchronously using the comment block. So this block that you see in this demonstration here is called a comment block. And it, it doesn't do anything in the co-space. It's like, it's just your way of adding a comment into their program so that they see it um, embedded. That's a great way to give students feedback. Um, it's also a great way for students to explain what they expect this program to do. So it's also a great, uh, great strategy as the teacher to, to require your students to add a comment into their co-blocks workspace to explain what they you know what, what the expectation is here and then when you tested or when, when they tested does the program do what they explained it what they explained in the comment block so comment block is a great opportunity for um, providing feedback but also help, um, having kids explain you know what their intentions are and then the last uh, teacher tip I wanted to show you is the CoBlox overview posters. This is a downloadable poster. You can get it off the CoSpaces website. And it it's a one big poster that shows all of the CoBlox that are uh, usable in CoSpaces. Um, clicking on this poster in the slide deck will take you to the classroom goodies page 
where you can download that Coblox overview poster. And if you, you can print it out on a standard sheet of paper, maybe give every student their own overview. If you have a poster printer at your school, print it up nice and big and put it on the wall as a great reference resource for students. There are some other really cool posters and digital badges and stuff here as well in the classroom goodies page. But the over the CoSpaces overview poster is a really great resource to have in your classroom. All right, and then one last thing I wanted to show you guys, um, now that we've kind of gone through the basics and once you've introduced your students to CoBlox, I've got um, a really great game design curriculum that I created a couple years ago for um, Games for Change. It's, it's a free curriculum. You don't have to participate in Games for Change. You don't have to pay for this. It's accessible for free um, through my website and their own, but it's a it's a curriculum I designed for their Games for Change challenge, and it's uh, it includes three pr uh, projects that it, um, challenge students to create uh, virtual experiences and augmented reality experiences, um, and also challenges each project kind of uh, gets a little bit more complex in in programming with Coblox. Um, the Floor is Lava uh, game is something I do with my uh, fourth graders as an end of year project. They love making this uh, particular game. But I've got, um, it's a great curriculum. It's laid out, I think, really well. It takes you step by step through the creation process. And it's something you can use as a teacher, you can give to your students and make it self paced up to you. But um, this is uh, slide number 17. Clicking the image here will take you to my blog post that has a link to. Um, to that uh, downloadable curriculum as a as a PDF. So give that a give that a look if you're looking for some pretty fun projects to do with your kids involving. Uh... Oh yes, great great uh, great suggestion, Jeff. Let me uh, see. He's saying in the Q and A to demo where that comment block is. Let me jump back to that. So here, I'll just jump into one of my demo uh, co-spaces here. Okay, so the comment block, just so you're aware, is it's part of the debug category. Now, if you don't see a lot of blocks, you make sure that you're in advanced mode here. Beginner mode will hide the debugging blocks as well as some other blocks. So if you switch over to advanced co-blocks, that'll reveal the debug blocks as well as a bunch of others. But the common block is a debug block and you drag it in, you can place it anywhere in your in your um, code blocks sequence here, and you can type directly in this. So, like the boy and the rooster will interact with each other. Oops. So you can put up to a thousand characters in a single comment block. Clicking it will reveal more of the message, and you can move that around. And again, a comment block doesn't affect the program at all. When I press play, the common block's not doing anything to the actual program. It just lives sort of on the back end as a way to you know, explain your program or a way for teachers to give feedback. But uh, that is the common block um, built in as a debugging tool in CoSpaces. Okay, now, uh, oops. To wrap things up here, um, just a quick reminder, uh, today's webinar uh, slide deck is available online at this link here. Um, the slide deck's embedded as well as links to the to code blocks tutorials, the games for change curriculum, um, the starting to code templates and solutions, as well as a bunch of other resources. Um, Peter asked earlier in the Q&A if there is a discount code. I do have a 30-day uh, pro trial code that you can uh, use if you want to test things out on the pro side. Uh, that is COS Michael FR. That'll give you 30 days of pro um, for free for you and 99 students, along with the Merge Cube add-on. If you're not sure how the how the pro trial code works, you can watch this embedded video here that demonstrates how to get to that that option in CoSpaces. All right, everyone, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Those of you that joined me live, I really appreciate it. Those of you that are watching the recording, I uh, hope you enjoy. hope you've learned something along the way. Hopefully, uh, this makes you feel a little bit more comfortable with using CoBlox in your classrooms. 
And if you ever have any questions or need any kind of support, feel free to reach out to me online. I'm at EdTechNocation or um, reach out in the Facebook uh, group. It's a great community. Lots of amazing educators there, great ambassadors of CoSpaces that are more than willing to help help out. Um, but uh, yeah, good luck with your school year. Good luck with CoSpaces. And we'll see you guys uh, in the next CoSpaces webinar. Take care, everyone.